Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Clams. I'm Will, and if you can't tell by the background, I'm not in Key West. I am in the Exumas in the Bahamas. I actually am cooking on the sailing vessel Sail La Vie, which is captained by freediver Steph. I'm uh, gonna put her information at the bottom. Uh, definitely check her out on Instagram. We are sailing, making our way south, and as we go, what we're gonna do is troll. And what that means is we're gonna put a couple of fishing rods out, throw a lure out the back, and just let it go as we're sailing. And hopefully we hook up with something like a tuna or a mahi-mahi, um, really anything. We just don't want barracuda. But if we get one, we'll cook it up and eat it. So join us on this adventure in the Bahamas. Hopefully I get a couple of episodes to you and uh, let's see what we come up with. All right, talk to us, Will. What's going on? I'm gonna walk him back to you. He's gonna run again. Oh no, come on, come on. See, so you don't want to put too much pressure when they're close. We got our cow mahi. It's a cow, you know that because of the rounded head. So there's a couple of ways to get the skin off of a mahi. You could skin it like a regular fillet, but we're gonna do something else where we're gonna score it all the way around and take the skin off. And the other thing, I'm gonna be careful down here because she might have eggs inside and we're gonna take those and cure them and make batarga. I've actually done a video on that. And the reason there's the cut in the tail there because we bled it the minute we got it in, which will lend itself to very nice, clean white heat. Now, usually it helps if these are super, super cold, but We'll see what we end up with here. If they're not very cold, the meat can stick to the skin and tear, but I think we will be okay. So now we have our skin fillet and we just have to take it off of the bone. So I'm not the fastest fillet, I'm more methodical and also not the greatest fish fillet, but I do okay. Above the rib cage to save that batarga. Nice and easy. There we go. And like I said, you could just cut through those ribs, but I want to preserve that batarga. There you go. That's our mahi loin. That right there, there, right now there's four of us on the boat. And I would say about from where my hand is to the top would feed all of us a huge, huge meal. And this is only one side. So we're gonna have a pretty good taco night. I'm gonna finish cleaning this one and then uh, we'll start prepping for tacos. All right, so we're gonna see what our mahi was feeding on. So they were chasing flying fish. We saw the flying fish first, and then right after we saw them, 
the uh, the mahi. You know what? Let me move this before I ruin our fillet with stomach guts. It's a flying fish. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is a flying fish. So, yeah, that's just more pieces of flying fish. But on a good note, we didn't find any plastic in its stomach, which happens. So that's that's nice. But yeah, that was his lunch, her lunch. <laughs> this is where I've been for the past couple of days and where we're gonna prep our stuff to bring over to the beach. Um, one of the things that I'm making is pineapple salsa. So in that I have red onion, uh, cilantro, pineapple, jalapeno, and just a little bit of uh, chili powder. Not too much. Don't need much. And with this, normally with the salsa I would put lime in it, but the pineapple is so tart that I am going to skip it. So dice that into small pieces. My cilantro, I don't go crazy with taking the stems off because they add flavor and texture. And she goes. A little bit of salt. And what the salt will do is suck some of the moisture out of the pineapple and soften it up. And a little bit of just chili powder. Now I cheated a little bit and made it a little bit ahead of time and had people taste it so we know we're good to go on this. But you'll see what I mean from what I made earlier that it looks a bit wet and that's because of the salt. So it becomes almost its own dressing. And we have enough jalapeno in there already but just a little more jalapeno because Steph and I both like spicy. So we're too spicy, too not spicy on the boat. So we go back and forth. But one of the things I did too, I'll show you the next ingredient. All this is, is sour cream and canned chipotle peppers. So I put them in pretty much equal parts, hand So that is going to be our hot sauce. Now, what I want to do, because we're going to go over, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but a beach right across the way, and we're building our bonfire, we're going to let it burn down, and then on the coals, I'm going to make little pouches using aluminum foil and our mahi-mahi, and we're going to let the residual heat of the coals slowly cook our mahi-mahi, and then we're going to put our tacos together. So in our pouches, I'm going to slice up some lemon. Not squeeze it, but just put a bit in there because that's going to steam inside. And then a little bit of garlic in each. Some salt. And then this is an interesting ingredient, harissa. Harissa is basically just a spice blend, but it's got a little bit of chipotle in it, it's got a little bit of sugar. It's really, really nice. We don't have to go overboard because our pineapple salsa has the chili powder in it. And then a bit of cracked black pepper. Now normally, if you've watched my channel, we would do exactly this, but with banana leaves. We have not seen any banana leaves, so I am reluctantly using tin foil. Not my favorite thing, but on the boat we have to work with what we have. So I'm going to pack everything up, we're going to grab our tortillas, and head over to the beach and light our fire. So one of the other challenges is going to be how do we heat up our tortillas because we don't have a grate or anything. We're going to do this all in the sand. So what I'm going to do, I wet a paper towel very, very, very lightly 
And then I'm going to put my tortillas in there, another paper towel in between. And then we're going to wrap this up and put it by the fire also. And what that's going to do is create a pocket of steam inside and steam our tortillas so they'll be cooked. So Matt got our fire going. It was a rager. Um, what I wanted to happen was it to burn down, which is what it's doing now, because we're gonna use just the charcoal and we're gonna put the fish just on the outside of the fire and use the residual heat to steam our fish inside our pouches, along with the tortillas. Hopefully that, hopefully that works with the tortillas and we don't just obliterate them. But the whole process should take about maybe 10 minutes with how hot that is right now. So these are our tortillas. We're just putting them to the side. And the same with our fish. I'm gonna give that 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll pull them out and that should be steamed perfectly. You don't wanna open up your packets too many times because we are at the beach. You don't wanna run the risk of getting sand in there. So you're gonna kinda have to just feel it in your heart when your fish is done. So I'm still gonna say we got at least another 10 minutes. So if you wanted to recreate this at home and uh, didn't have a beach accessible or whatever, if you took your barbecue and put a bit, a bit of wood in your barbecue, burnt it all off, and then just the ash, that's actually uh, something that Sicilians do with swordfish and they wrap them in grape leaves. So they'll let all the wood burn off and then they'll put the swordfish that's wrapped in the grape leaf with a little bit of herbs and spices under the coals and they'll let it really slowly, slowly cook. So same idea as this, you could do this at home. All right, check our tortillas. Oh, <laughs> they are perfectly steamed. I'm not gonna take them out of here because we're not ready yet, but they are nice soft and steamed to where they're almost falling apart it worked <laughs> all right pull off our tortillas come on <laughs> seriously feel that <laughs> it really is perfect that is awesome all right how are you doing this is my number out yeah so we're gonna put dicky it's dinner time <laughs> couple down like wow, this. this is amazing. Now put a little bit of cabbage on each one. I think the thing you have to accept when cooking on the beach is that you are going to have sand in You're your food. You're going to eat a little sand. You're going to eat a little sand. It's it helps with digestion. Yeah, <laughs> it's also like that. It's a, it's a grainy texture. <laughs> Moment of truth on our fish. There we go. Look at that. Oh, wow. Look. Whoa. That's crazy. Look at that. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is amazing. So I'm just going to use my hands, I think. <laughs> We've. Zinke is very interesting. <laughs> There's one for you, don't worry. It really is, for fish, indirect heat to me is the best way to cook it. Because it just fish is so delicate like I mean you couldn't have cooked that more perfect you couldn't have gotten that in a pan I mean it would have taken a lot of skill all right so we have our pineapple salsa that we made a little bit of that I feel like Jamie Oliver would be proud I told you when it's, I was it's a that kid. That rustic feel, that kind of like, look at it, it's just decadent. One of my favorite cooking moments was Jamie Oliver cooking a whole fish wrapped in newspaper on a yeah. beach 
in a pit. Oh, and here we are now. So I will dedicate this to Jamie <laughs> Oliver right now. <laughs> All right, and then for me and Steph, we have our Chipotle crema because we're the two spicy ones. <laughs> In taste and personality. <laughs> <laughs> wow, chef. And I almost walked off the boat without an avocado. We would have had to cancel the whole thing. You have to have avocado and some limes. Oh, that's not a pretty avocado, but we're gonna use it anyway. <laughs> All right, guys, don't wait, dig in. <laughs> if you guys like this episode, like and subscribe. <laughs>